The story begins with our protagonist, Park Han Jo On, who was sitting alone in the class. A guy named Boss Choi comes in and he shows his lackeys how much money he had made this month. It was grand total of 40 million won. They were amazed to see that much money and were asking him for a party. But he said that he had to take care of something. He goes to Han and slams his head on the desk. He was angry at him for not buying his clothes. He forces the students to buy his clothes. And if they don't, he used to bully them. He beats him brutally but was surprised to see the rage in his eyes, even after that. Choi taunts him saying when he fought with Kim Chion Su, his life was ruined. Park thinks about what happened two years ago. There used to be a nationwide gang of high school students called Nexus. Han went to war against the leader of the Nexus, Kim Chion Su. Although he had won the war, the Nexus members sued him. Due to Nexus' consistent portrayal of false situations and fabrication of evidence, Han lost the trial. And for indemnity, his father had to sell his gym, to which his further devoted his entire life. After that incident, Han took a vow to never fight again. He was deeply broken, but his father didn't blame him for any of this. After that incident, he accepted the mentality that if you don't have money, you lose even if you win. After school, when Han was going to his home, some thug students recognize him. One of them tells their leader that he was the infamous Han Han Joan, who became an idiot after he lost to Nexus. They were also a member of Nexus. Every Nexus member has a unique kind of ring. That was their some sort of identity card. The guy tries to pick a fight with Park. They take him to an alley and start beating him and mocking him, and he was just taking all this abuse without even resisting. One of the thugs says that his father sold him to pay his debt. Park grabs his legs, glares at them with his scary eyes, and calls them a piece of garbage. They were intimidated by just his glance. They get even angrier and start beating him more brutally. After they were done, they start going back. A guy comes there and asks him why is he taking all this beating when he could destroy their life in just one beating. Park didn't have enough money to sue those guys and he was afraid that they would sue him again if he fights back. That guy gives him a bag full of money and says that with that money he could sue them, or at least hit them and make them pay. Han asks him who was he, to which he replies that he was someone who wanted to seek him Chion Su. Han was a little surprised to hear Thin. The guy says that he'd tell him the rest when he gets rid of these guys. Those thugs come back seeing all that money, and as they were going to take it, Han attacks him and he falls on the ground in just one attack, unconscious. Han says to that guy that he could take care of them in four seconds, and he beats them in that time as he had said. Now that he had taken care of them, he asks that guy again, who was he? The guy takes him to his company and shows him his profile. He was Korea's youngest self-made conglomerate, Oh Jun Woo. Jun Woo was Korea's youngest successful CEO, who was crazy rich. Nexus leader Kim Cheon Soo was currently a professional gamer, Korea's shining star. Jun Woo hated him for something that he did to him in the past. Even after the war with Han ended, he still keeps gathering goons and acts like a gangster. If Jun Woo wanted, he could destroy his social life and financial life. But that's not what he wants. He wants to use Kim's own methods, which are dirty, cheap, and disgusting to trample his life into the depths of the mantle. From now on, all the money that Park needs to destroy Kim Chion Su, and everything else that he needs for the rest of his life, Jun Woo would pay for it. In return, he wants Park to be his fist against Kim. Han asks him why he hates Kim so much, to which he replies that he would know soon enough. The next day, Han comes to the school, full of anger. Jun Wu had asked him to take care of the Nexus's member in your class first. It was Boss Choi. He was one of the Nexus's members. In the class when Boss Choi was forcing all the students to buy his clothes. Han comes there and just punches him brutally in the face, without even saying anything. The whole class was in shock, especially his lackeys. We see a short backstory of Boss Choi. He used to think he was the strongest student, and he couldn't lose ever. That was until he met Park Han Jo On. Park was a beast in the form of a human, and Boss Choi knew that he could never be as strong as him. But when Kim Chion Su appeared, he made Park's life a living hell and made Park beg before him. And all this was because he was rich. That's when Boss Choi realized that the strongest power out there is money. He built an online cloth shopping store and forced other students to buy it. And that's how he was able to keep Park under his control as well. But all that ends today. Park was brutally beating him. He asks his friends to help him, but they just avoid him. He starts making a video and threatens him with a lawsuit again. But this time, he was not stopping and was continuously beating him. He runs from the class and goes to Park Soong. He was in great need of money, so he would do anything to get some. Choi offers him 1 million won if he was able to beat Park. Soon gasps for 2 million and was ready to fight Han Jo-on. He says to Han Jo-on that it's not personal, 
He just needs money for the college entrance exam. Han Joan gives him money himself and told him not to get involved in this, and he agrees. A teacher comes there and sees Han Joan beating Choi. He takes them to his office and starts shouting at Han Joan for beating him and threatens to expel out of the school. Choi was smiling seeing him in this situation. Han Joan starts beating him in front of the teacher. A man comes there and asks Han Joan to stop now. He was a lawyer from K.O. Law Firm. The teacher was baffled to hear that because K.O. Law Firm is the most influential law firm in Korea. After talking to the lawyer, the principal apologizes to Han Joan and expelled Choi from the school. Han Joan asked him how Jun Woo was able to do it. Jun Woo shows him all the illegal deeds the principal had done. Jun Woo just used some of those to blackmail the principal. Jun Woo was going to use the principal to send Choi to juvenile detention. And after that, he would send him to prison too because he was a disgusting teacher. Choi was angry at him and he decided to get rid of him for good. The next morning, Choi goes to a place where he had ordered some thugs to take care of someone. They were beating Park Soon for not helping him. He wanted them to take care of someone else for him. And he was giving 10 million won for it. The guy in glasses, Jin Sung asks him who he was. He must be someone big for him to pay that much. To which he replies, Park Han Jun. He was baffled to hear that name. Jin Sung says if it's him, then 10 million is nothing. Choi promises to give 20 more million after they take care of everything. And now Jin Sung agrees. Jun Woo was visiting a burnt house. He was talking to someone but there was no one there. We see a picture and the people in that image were all dead. Jun Woo thinks about the day they died and was extremely angry. His lawyer tells him that Boss Choi had made his move. Jun Woo orders him to take care of it. Han Joan's father gets a decent job and he was very happy. He was wondering. Why all things are going so well suddenly? Han Joan gets a call from Jun Woo, who told him that Boss Choi had made a move, but they were already there. He asks him who are they when suddenly he sees a truck coming towards him, and the driver was one of the goons. They know they can't win against Han Joo in a fur fight, so they were using cheap tactics like this. Instead of trying to get out of the way, Han Joan runs toward the truck. They were shocked and confused to see that. He hits the car and jumps over it. That way he avoided a direct hit with the truck. Han Joo gets up, and now he was really pissed off. But their goal for today was complete. They wanted to make him weak by injuring him first. They get into their truck and retreat. But Han Joo follows and chases them. They were laughing at him for trying to chase a truck, but seconds later were terrified to see him so close to them. He jumps over the truck, breaks the window, catches one of the guys, and jumps off the truck with him. Even though one of their men was caught, they don't stop and keep going. Han Joan asks the guy about their location, but he doesn't answer him, so he starts beating him. When they get to their base, they were celebrating. Boss Joy was angry at him for celebrating, even though they didn't even finish him. Jin Sung gets angry at him for wanting them to kill a beast like Han Joan and expecting the results immediately. He told him how he would first make him weak and unable to fight back little by little, and when the time comes, they would kill him eventually. They hear a loud punch on their door. The door was made of iron, even then it got a dent. They hear more punches and Jin Sung asks one of the guys to check outside. When he sees outside, it was Park Han Joo. They were terrified and started panicking. Jin Sung stops them from panicking saying, no matter how strong he is, he couldn't crush that iron door. The punches stopped. They were relieved thinking he left. But one of the goons sees something and was terrified inside out. It was Han Joan on the window. He breaks the window and gets inside. Jin Sung was stunned because their base was on the third floor. He starts beating everyone there, not giving anyone any chance to escape. Jin Sung orders all his men to attack him at once. But even then they couldn't defeat him. One of the goons hits him with a baseball bat but the bat broke instead. Han Joan was now even more pissed off and throw that guy out through the window, and he falls from the third floor to the ground. Someone comes there on a bike. It was a girl named Choi Siohyun. She asks him if Han Joan was up there. The guy thinks he's dead and calls her Lady Angel and asks for her number. She hits him with her helmet and calls Jun Woo to give him Han Joan's location. Everyone was on the ground except Jin Sung. He asked Han Joan why did he spare him? Was it because he wants to do business with him? Han Joan grabs him by the neck and says that he was gonna beat him the most and starts punching him. A man comes out of the room and sees Han Joan beating him. He was trembling with fear but still grabs Han Joan and stops him from destroying his house. These guys take this guy's house and made it their base. Jun Woo comes there and gives that guy 50 million won. Jin Sung was terrified and makes a run for it through the window. But Han Joon grabs him in midair while he was falling. He uses a knife to get himself off his grab and falls directly on the ground, 
and was heavily injured. But he still gets up and crawls out of there. One of his guys lows at Jun Wu and Han Zhouan, saying they are dead now because that guy's father is a rich sailor and was very dangerous. But Jun Wu couldn't care less. Jin Sung goes to his father, heavily injured, and asks him to get rid of those two for him. His father was furious and calls all his men and goes to fight them. When he arrives there, he recognizes Jun Wu and calls him chairman. He gets a call from one of his employees, who told him that all of the deals for this year have been suddenly cancelled, and it was done by the chairman himself. Jun Wu looks at him with his devilish eyes. That man grovels before him and begs him not to ruin his company. Jun Wu says to him that his son made him spend 50 million won, while it's not a big deal to him, but he wants his son to work for that amount. The next day Jun Wu gathers everyone to discuss their future plan. He plans on expanding the team, and the one he wants to include first was Kim Dongan, from Dongyan High School, which was in Nexus control. When Han Zhouan was at war with Nexus, Kim Dongan was one of the guys who fought with him until the very end. Kim was the former number one at Donghaian High School, and he was also Han Zhouan's best friend. During that hellish war, his knees were injured, and he wasn't even able to walk properly. But Jun Wu was determined on including Kim in the team. Han was a little hesitant at first but then Jun Wu tells him that Kim was under Nexus control. Now Han was furious. At Donggyan High School, there was a meeting regarding recent incidents that included Han and Boss Choi. They were just discussing it when a guy comes there, terrified, and told them that Han Zhouan was the new transfer student. Everyone there was stunned. Han comes to the class and just says that he'd come here to destroy them all. He sits next to a guy named Joe Wooming. He was number 12 in this school. He only transferred this year. His seniors had told him not to mess with Han, but he wanted to see for himself how strong was Han. He keeps annoying Han into fighting him and slaps Han. Han just pinches his face and makes him unconscious, and just sleeps after that. The girl asks Jin Wu why he wanted to recruit Kim, even though he was crippled after the fight, to which he replies, it was because of his tenacity. Due to the war that he lost, he was now shopper than ever. At the school, while Han was walking in the hallway, everyone there was looking at him with cold eyes. Now we see Kim, who was unable to even walk properly, and his face was bruised from the all beatings. One of the guys starts beating him ruthlessly because he was late to bring their snacks. And because of that, the guy lost a bet to his friend. Han was watching this and was getting angrier and angrier. The girl asks Jun Wu, why to go to all this trouble just to recruit him when you could use your money to make him join the team? To which he replies that Kim was not someone you could just buy with money. In the past, he fought the war only because Han Wu fought, that's all. That is what kind of friend he was. After school, Han goes to see Kim when he was alone. Kim says to him that he had heard that Han was here to destroy this school. Nexus had become way stronger than they used to be. He had given all hope on fighting back and said that they have lost. Han tells him that they would win this time, to which he replies if he had known that they'd lose, he wouldn't have fought in the first place. And thanks to that he became crippled. But Han promises him that they would win no matter what. The current number one of the school, Min Kingchul, was watching all this, and he orders his goons to prepare to beat up Park Hanjin. Kim goes to the hospital where the doctor told him to go to a bigger hospital and get a surgery, or he wouldn't be able to use his legs for good. King meets Kim on the way. He was here to taunt him for being crippled and for helping Han before, and says if he was getting any funny ideas of going against him, he'd smash his legs again. King used to be Kim's underling, but he betrayed them by joining Nexus. The next day, King announces on the school mic that all the students in the whole school are to attack Park Hanjin and make him suffer as much as possible. King knows that Park is strong and doesn't underestimate him. He doesn't fight him head on, instead, he orders all the students to beat Han for him. And now the entire school was on their way to fight Han. And the war begins. Two guys were thrown out through the window, all beaten up, and Han come out, standing on top of one guy like a demon. All the underlings in that class were wiped out completely. Han says in a scary voice, Let's see who's the predator. They all attack him and he just keeps punching them, knocking them out one by one. Meanwhile, Kim was sitting alone in the class, listening to everything that was going on outside and controlling himself from interfering. Even when they attack him all at once, they couldn't defeat him. Now they started to see that he might be able to beat them all up. Now instead of just attacking him randomly, they tried to hold him and were even able to succeed in that. And now they start beating him. But Han gets out of that predicament as well by beating them brutally. And now the whole hallway was filled with bodies and blood. He didn't even get a chance to catch his breath. And even more thugs come to that floor. Kim was angry at him for being so stupid and fighting them alone. Sakum's there and says the Hanjin must be upset because his best friend is just sitting 
while he was fighting outside. When Kim asks her who is she, she introduces herself as Hanjin's colleague. Kim was surprised for a second. He says that he wouldn't fight. She was now here to tell him to fight. She told him why Hanjin is fighting. He already knew that the whole school was gonna come after him, but he still insisted on fighting till the end. And his reason was, he wanted to show Kim that he would win this time. Kim remembers what he had said to him earlier. In the meantime, Hanjin had defeated the second wave of those students as well and now was completely exhausted. Now King himself comes there, clapping and praising Hanjin for defeating those students all by himself, but that was just it. Now, these guys aren't to be taken lightly. Number 5 Josaurian, Number 7 Choi Min Wook, Number 4 King Tai Hoon, Number 3 Dae Gil, Number 2 Jian Bozok and Number 1 King himself. Everyone out there was a monster like Han Joon. Even after all that injuries and exhaustion, Han Joon still gets in a fighting position. King smirks and orders his underlings to attack him. They all attack him at once, but as Han was going to fight them, someone throws a viper and knocks one of the guys out. They were shocked to see who it was. It was Kim Dong Hyun, the former number one of Dong Gai and Hai. They were angry at Dong Hyun for betraying them and siding with Park Han Joon. The current boss of that high school orders his goons to take care of him with Han Joon. They attack Dong Hyun and he starts beating them one by one, despite being crippled with one leg. He was enduring the pain and was charging at them non-stop. And from the other side of the hall, Han Joon also started to beat the crap out of them. The delinquents were baffled at how they were getting beaten by them. One of them was completely exhausted and the other one was crippled, so how were they losing to them? Just the two of them were up against the whole school and were still overpowering them. During the fight, Dong Hyun apologizes to Han Joon for blaming him for his situation before, even though he knew that he was not the one responsible. Han Joon was happy to hear that. While they were talking, the current number one attacks them. Dong Hyun told Han Joon to not interfere, as he was the one who was gonna take that guy down. They dodge his attack and make a run for it. The boss thought that they were running from him and chased them, when in reality, they were luring him inside a room. Han Joon throws the boss in the class and Dong Hyun closes the door, as he wanted to fight him one on one and pay him back for all the things he had done to him. Meanwhile, Han Joon took care of the rest of the goons. The boss mocks Dong Hyun for helping Han Joon again, but Dong Yun pities him for not having a friend. The boss gets pissed and attacks him, but Dong Hyun blocks his attack and starts beating him, pushing him back. The boss grabs him by the waist, picks him up and slams him onto the wall. He attacks Dong Hyun but he dodges the attack, leaving his bat on behind in the process. Due to not having a weapon on him, Dong Hyun uses his shirt as a weapon against him, blocking his eyesight, and starts to hit him in the face continuously. But, the boss grabs his injured leg and locks it with his body, and starts attacking him at the same spot where he was injured before. Dong Hyun screams in pain while he laughs like a lunatic. After he was done breaking his leg, he was leaving, when Dong Hyun gets up, saying it was not over just yet. The boss was frustrated seeing him get up again. He starts beating him more intensely, not giving him any chance to fight back. As the boss was leaving after taking him down, Dong Hyun gets up again. As the boss attacks him, Dong Hyun uses the glass around him as his weapon and cuts his face with his next punch. Dong Hyun told him that he couldn't lose to him, or he would be too ashamed to show his face to Han Joon. The boss tries to fight back, but Dong Hyun was overpowering him now, hitting him punch after punch to his face non-stop. The started to realize that now he was the one in a bad position. Dong Hyun remembers all the awful things he had done to him, and takes his revenge to the heart's content, beating him to a pulp. When he gets outside, Han Joon had also defeated all of them. Han Joon gives Dong Hyun a hand and they get out of there laughing. After some time, Dong Yun Association Manager Lee, a real gangster comes there. He was angry at the current boss of the school and orders his men to bring Park Han Joon to him. Just then, Jin Woo's lawyers come there to have a deal with them. He showed him all the illegal things he was involved in and threatens to go public with it if he doesn't give them this high school. On the other hand, at the hospital, the doctor gives them the good news that Dong Yun's surgery was a success and was expected to have a full recovery. At another place, Jun Wu goes to meet number one of the Nexus group, Kim Chin Su himself. Kim Su was keeping a composer and was acting nice. Jun Wu asks him if he remembers who he was, to which he replies that they should forget about the past and move forward. Jun Wu gets annoyed by his fake good boy behavior 
and to piss him off, he told him that it was him who took over the Dongyan High. But even then Kim Soo was keeping his straight face. When he was leaving, Jun Wu threatens to destroy him the next time they meet. And we see how he was faking his emotions and was pissed in reality. After he was gone, Jun Wu was relieved that he still feels the rage towards him. Inside his car, Kim Soo wants his men to be ready, as this fight could be the largest fight in the history of South Korea. Inside a huge building, there was a meeting of the Nexus executive. The top of Nexus's branch managers were there. Gyeongji branch manager Choi Tai Su, Gang One branch manager, Kim Ji Hyok, Chungcheng branch manager Lee Moon Gil, Jella branch manager Jo Chin Ji Yu, Gyeong Sang branch manager Baek Dong Chin, and Inchun branch manager Nam In Su. They all knew that they were there because of Park Han Jo On. One of them, who had only joined the Nexus last year, asks them who he was and why they had to come all the way to Seoul for him. The other branch leader laughs at him for not knowing about him and fills him in. He told him that two years ago, there was a dangerous guy called Park Han Jo On. He was the head of a small territory in Seoul. Despite Nexus taking over all the surrounding territories including those outside Seoul, they had great difficulty taking over Park Hanjin's territory. It was embarrassing for them. Not only that, but the other territories saw Hanjin and saw Hope. So there were a bunch of attacks on Nexus. So they went all in to catch Park Hanjin. But something happened that went beyond their expectations. Despite having the numbers, they kept on losing the fight. Not only that, but Nexus was teetering on the verge of destruction. The new guy asks how was that even possible, to which the senior replies that Park Hajin was a monster. The new guy marks them saying that they were weaklings. The atmosphere there completely changed. Just then, Kim Sun also comes there. He told them why he called them he. One of them says that Kim Sun was making too much fuss about a school being taken. Kim Sun smiles at him, and that sends chills down his spine and he was terrified. The Inchun branch manager Nam Su asks Kim Sun to let him take Kai of Hanjin. Kim Soon told him that he has a benefactor backing him up this time, so it wouldn't be easy. But he says to him that after getting his scar, he was never not ready. The others vote in his favor too, and he finally gets that chance to take down Park Hanjin. Nam Su gathers all his guys to tell them that they could finally kill Park Hanjin, and they were thrilled to hear that. On the other hand, Jun Wu takes Hanjin to the same burnt house. He was gonna tell him about his side of the story, how he became that rich, and why he wanted to destroy Nexus. He told him that the money he was using wasn't his, but the owner of that house. It was around two years ago, Jun Wu had a friend, who was a social butterfly, the complete opposite of Jun Wu. They were friends for as long as he could remember, and now they were like a family. His friend was a very smart and intelligent individual. He had made a stock trading AI, capable of trading for the best trades. He coded all this by himself and learned about market prediction. But, after Park Hanjin was defeated, everything changed. Everyone fell victim to them, being stomped on upon sight, breaking up any unapproved groups. But Jun Wu wasn't the kind to just sit there and let some third-rate thug have their way with him, and his friend also the same. They weren't good at fighting, they fought like wild animals, and thought if they keep up this crazy act, they would get tired of them and would leave them alone. But they were way crazier than he thought. They burned down Hyok's house while Hyok and his family were inside. And all he could do was just stand there and watch them die. He confronts the delinquents who had done this to his friend. They don't deny it and beat him to a pulp. Even though they killed his friend and even confessed it, there was nothing he could do to take revenge. He wanted to die as well. Just then he notices the AI that Hyok had made. It was running in the background all this time. The learning data storage was full and now it was trading on its own. Jun Wu thought he was going to die anyway, but before that, he should donate whatever money it had made to charity. But when he sees the money in his account, he was shocked. It was only maddening to him that he couldn't share that happiness with Hyok, and that rage became his reason to live. He didn't cave he had to spend all his money to take his revenge on Nexus, as the money was not his to begin with. When Han Joan asks why he was telling him all that, Jun Wu replies, it was to gaslight him, so that he becomes unable to give up. On his way, Jun Wu calls the girl who was working with him. She told him to be careful as their next target was in Chun. They don't think before they act, and that's exactly what was going on right. Their biker gang was attacking them, throwing paints to block their sight. 
The car crashes into something and Jun Wu gets unconscious. Nam Su takes the call and told her to pass the message to Han Jin that Nam Su from the Inchun branch was waiting for him and he would understand the rest. They take Jun Wu with them as a hostage. While Han Jin was going to his house, thinking about all the things that Jun Wu had said to him, she comes there and told him about Jun Wu's abduction by the Inchon gangsters. On the other hand, Jun Wu wakes up in a factory and sees the number two and the number one of the gang in front of him. He was just bait for Hanjin to lure him there. Jun Wu laughs at their stupidity for abducting a straight up enterprise owner and telling them that they were no match for Hanjin. He reminds them of the time when they kneeled before Pok Hanjin to save themselves and called them pathetic. Nam Su corrects him saying that only the boss at the time was the one who kneeled, not them. The boss at that time was Nam Su's big brother. Jun Wu pisses them off saying he kneeled to save him. Just when the number two of the gang was about to hit Jun Wu, a guy comes in and told them that Han Jin was on his way there. Nam Su told Jun Wu to watch as the new Inchun takes down Han Jin. Han Jin was on his way to the factory, while the bikers from the Inchun were chasing them. And in front of them was the number two of the gang, who was there to bring him to the boss, because the fights in Inchun are one on one. While the guy was taking them to the boss, the girl kept annoying him until he stopped ignoring him. After getting his attention, she asks him why they were doing all this when they had kneeled before Hanjin two years ago. She tries to provoke him by calling them losers. Hanjin chimes in with her, and that pisses the guy off and he attacks him. This was the first time when someone had sent him flying as he was a monster-sized guy from his childhood. The whole gang starts to panic seeing their number two in that state and they get in position to fight. The girl mocks them for bluffing that they only fight one on one when Nam Su orders everyone to back off, as he was the one who was gonna beat him. Han Jin recognizes him as the younger brother of the previous boss and was about to inquire him about that. When suddenly he attacks him so fast that Han Jin couldn't even react to it. Jun Wu was also shocked to see him bleeding. He didn't want to have any conversation with Han Jin. He just wanted to fight him for the shame they went through because of him. Hanjin realizes that his jabs were too fast for him to dodge, and he receives the hit directly. Nam Su has been waiting for this moment for months now. Hanjin's attack doesn't land on him, and he was much slower compared to Nam Su. Nam Su attacks him directly in the face, and now Hanjin was also pissed. After the boss of the Inchon kneeled to Hanjin, Nam Su kept training for months without a day official. He was considered a genius in boxing, but boxing was boring to him because he wanted to get stronger in real fights. He went around fighting gang members, putting his life on the line. In the last two years, he destroyed 27 schools and 13 gyms. He also disbanded four gangs. He got stronger through the real fights, and it was all to get his revenge on Park Hanjin. But he feels disrespected and disappointed seeing how weak Hanjin was. Nam Su was overpowering him while he just kept receiving the hits. During his research on Hanjin, Jun Wu found something interesting. Park Hanjin never learned any martial arts. He just trained his physical abilities. He was someone gifted with natural strength, stamina, and adaptability. That's how he almost tore Nexus apart. At the moment, Hanjin was figuring out Nam Su, and the moment he does, that would turn the table. But the problem was that Nam Sun was also aware of this. A boxer's bare fists are enough to rip apart human flesh, and he was taking advantage of that knowledge. He was damaging him as much as possible in preparation for the second round. When attacking him directly didn't work, Hanjin tries to attack his lower part, thinking he was a boxer who wouldn't know how to defend his lower body. As Hanjin was about to get Nam Su into a corner, he attacks him with his leg and tackles him onto the ground. The others start celebrating his dominance but Nam Su knows this was not over just yet. Hanjin's eyes were bleeding making his eyesight blurry. Taking advantage of that, Nam Su attacks him. But to his surprise, Hanjin manages to dodge his attack this time and strikes back for the first time. Nam Su wonders if he has already figured out his fighting style. Now Hanjin was pushing him back. Nam Su's speed was considered one of the fastest in human history. But Park Hanjin was a monster. The girl asks Jun Wu why was he getting beaten up, to which he replies that he wasn't particularly getting beaten up, instead, he was learning through his body. Every time Nam Su uses a new fighting style, Hanjin figures it out. He has been training like a mad dog all this time, and he wasn't going to give up that easily. He dodges Hanjin's next attack and strikes him back with his full speed and power. 
He badly injures Hanjin throughout his body and starts punching him as fast as he could, not giving him any chance to fight back. He goes faster and faster until Hanjin couldn't keep up with him. Jun Wu says that it was already over, and we see that Hanjin strikes Nam Su back, calling him slow. While Hanjin was beating the hell out of him, Nam Su remembers what his brother had told him and why he kneeled before Hanjin. It was to protect all of them, but Nam Su was not having it. He kept asking his brother to stand up and fight back, and when he doesn't listen to him, he attacks Hanjin himself. And that's how he got that scar on his face, fighting Hanjin. In the present, Namsu was losing the fight. He started to see why his brother didn't fight him. He was terrified and wanted to run away. One of the gang members provoked the number two saying if he was just going to watch. Now all the gang members attack Hanjin all at once. Namsu yells at them to stop and kneels before Hajin himself, accepting his defeat. He finally realizes what his brother was trying to do that time. The others protest his decision and ask him to get up. Jun Wu told them that he was doing that so that they wouldn't get beaten up by Hanjin. He punches Nam Su for kidnapping him and was going to let this matter slide because he knows that they owe Nexus a lot. Every one of them was in debt to Nexus. The money they had loaned from Nexus, Jun Wu had paid, as well as their tuition fees. They were shocked to hear that. Jun Wu knew that they were working day and night to make their own money to pay the debt. He knew that Nexus wouldn't leave them alone until they pay the money. Namsu was grateful and promises to pay him back someday. After the Inchun incident, the girl was highly compensated for her work and wanted to go shopping with Hanjin. At the Nexus Play Zone, we see the Play Zone's head branch Choi Tai Su. He learns about Inchun dropping off and a man named Jun Wu paying all their debt. Inside the Play Zone, he used to run a casino, and he was also the one who loaned in Chun. He reassures the guy on the phone saying he is already working on the next plan. We see a girl playing with him. She had lost a lot of money to him, and with this round, she had lost over 120 million won to him. As his men were taking her away to get the money out of her, she agrees to the deal that he offered her earlier, which was to bring the girl that was working for Jun Wu to him, and he would forget about her debt. She had told him that she was very close to her. At the hospital, Dong Gaian's surgery was a success and he would be out of rehabilitating soon. He had also started to do intense workouts on his legs. Jun Wu comes to see him. He told him that he didn't need to fight Nexus if he felt pressured to do it. Dong Gaian replies that his relationship with Nexus would be over only if he wins the fight and that it was his own will to fight against them. Now Jun Wu talks to Hanjin about their next target the one who lent money to In Chun, the play zone's head branch, Choi Tai Su. It was the first time Hanjin had heard this name. Jun Wu told him that he was the biggest pillar of Nexus capital. He was the first that needed to be removed. They go to an isolated place to meet someone. The guy was trembling with fear and asked them if they were really gonna protect him. Jun Wu reassures him about his safety, and the guy told them that Choi Tai Su was a demon. He told him his side of the story, how he always wanted to be a model or influencer, but he wasn't going anywhere no matter what he did. Just then, he was invited to a group of people of had hundred and thousand of followers. After hanging on to them for long enough, his followers skyrocketed, but then they showed their true colors. They took him to the Nexus play zone to gamble, and when he didn't participate, they kicked him out of the group. His follower number goes back to the way they were before. No matter what he did, he didn't succeed. Desperate, he goes back to the play zone and agrees to play the game. He became addicted to gambling and lost everything he had. Then someone approached him and lent him money. It was Choi Tai Su. The guy kept borrowing money from him and owed him 10 year worth of money. And then he comes to know that the one who trapped him was Choi Tai Su himself. Jun Wu assures him saying it wasn't his fault, and that they would take care of him. The next day, the same guy comes to the storming in the same play zone and challenges them to the game. It was Jun Wu who had told him to go there and play again. At first, he freaks out hearing his plan, but Jun Wu told him if he wanted to get out of their trap for good, this was the best way. He gives him the money to play, as well as his own cut, and he also assures him about his safety. The dealer accepts his challenge. Earlier, the guy asked Jun Wu what he was planning to do, to which he replies that he was going to take all of Nexus's money through gambling, and he had a plan for that. Jun Wu presumes that the dealer must be playing some tricks from what he had heard from the guy. They were going to take advantage of that. He goes all in the first round as the game starts. Gambling has its own rule. If you are caught up doing a trick, you lose all your money. 
Just when the dealer was about to cheat, he hears some commotions. When he looks at what was causing it, he gets attacked by Hanjin as he was in the middle of cheating. He gets exposed playing tricks. And as the rule states, the cheater has to give all his money to the opposing party. But they obviously wouldn't let them go with all their money. But Jun Wu had already predicted this outcome and had Hanjin take care of them. After beating up the guards, he goes to the other counter and makes them play. And as the dealer was about to spin the ball, Hanjin attacks him and exposes him as well, and beats the hell out of those guys. They did the same for three more branches. At the play zone headquarters, Choi Tai got a news of branches 2, 4, and 5 going bankrupt. He compliments their ability. He was talking to the girl, Seo Hyon. She scolds her friend for making an excuse and bringing her there. He offers her triple the amount of money that Jun Woo pays her, and in return, she had to share Jun Woo's plan with him. He was expecting some resistance but she immediately agrees to it. Choi Tai had his doubts and threatens to kill her if she were to lie to him. He deposits the money in her account and she told him his next move, which was Hanjin attacking the headquarters in 10 seconds. Hajin comes there breaking the doors and beating all his guards outside with the gambling guy, who challenges them to play as well. The guards attack Hanjin but he instantly takes them down. Choritai's mind wasn't working now. He knew that there was nothing that could stop him now. He also gets attacked by Hanjin. Taisu orders his personal body gods, who were giants that came from another country to attack him. They ask permission to kill him, and he gives them full freedom to do whatever they wanted with him. While Hanjin was busy fighting, Choi Tai Su makes a run for it as he was not good at fighting. He managed to come this far, not because he was good at fighting, but because he uses his money and underlings right. He was thinking of all the possibilities to defeat him as he already knew that those guys also were no match for him. And that's exactly what happened. Hanjin beat the two of them, but in the meantime, Choi Tai Su managed to escape. Hanjin returns and reports this to Jun Wu and he assures him that he would find him soon. Choi Taisu was hiding in an unknown place with his friend. Choi Taisu's next plan to destroy Park Hanjin was already in motion. With the help of his friend, he put a bounty of 2 billion on Hanjin's head and put it on his website. The total number of members at his site was over 85,000. Taisu knew that no one would go after him because they are too scared to face him, and they also knew that there was no way they could catch him. So, he made incentives. If you just exhaust him you still get money. If you stab him all and a fatal blow, or a fracture, you still get a lot of money. Just by even participating and attempting could make you a lot of money. Thugs and delinquents all over Seoul were on their way to kill him, and there was uproar in the underworld after the bounty. And that's how, the hunt for Park Hanjin, begins. We see a girl who approaches Hanjin, and while he was distracted, the girl rushes towards him to stab him and collect her prize. But as expected, Hajin catches her. He instantly knew she was not from Nexus because she was so clumsy. Just then, a guy attacks him from behind which he dodges as well. He knocks the guy down and asks the girl what was going on. She shows him the bounty on his head on the gambling site. Hanjin realizes that it must be Choi Tai Su. Just then, a new wave of people comes to collect the bounty. Hanjin notices that most of them were just civilians. He was being attacked non-stop. Taisa's friend asks him if he would go bankrupt because of all these people participating, to which he replies that the reason he earns money is to see exactly for moments like this. Making people dance like a dog with money. These guys were those who were scammed by Taisu and lost their money to gambling. They would do anything to get their money back, and Choi Taisu was taking advantage of that. Hanjin fights them back while holding back his strength. He sees even a kid was there to kill him. He was trying his best to not hurt them too much while avoiding their attempts to kill him. He gets a call from Jun Wu. He already knows about the situation and told him that he was sending his men as well, but Hanjin said that he could handle them all and that he should look for Choi Tai Su instead. Jun Wu orders his team leader that they were going to use their company's staff to look for him. Hanjin tries to escape from that situation. While he was escaping, a guy told someone to be ready as he was on his way there. When Hanjin gets inside a warehouse, someone closes the entrance. Some thugs were waiting for him in the warehouse. Hanjin realizes that they were using the civilians to lure him there and finds out that these guys were from Nexus. Hanjin was pissed seeing them, and now he was not gonna hold back against them. He starts beating them brutally, taking down half of them in just a few minutes but he was still nowhere near exhausted. 
The other members were too scared to even attack him and were wondering how a monster like this could exist. Just then, Hanjin gets a call from Jun Wu, who tells him that he had found Choi Tice's location and demands him to go there as soon as possible. As he approaches the goons, they get terrified the more he gets closer. But instead of beating them up, he ignores them as they were already lost and had given up. Shoritaisu was watching him from the CCTV cameras in that area. He was thrilled to see his face injured and the anger on his face. He says that he was just only getting started. There are gonna be 10 times more dangers from now on. We see a bunch of more guys who were there to collect the bounty on his head. Now that they had almost taken care of Hanjin, Taisu's friend suggested that they should get rid of Jun Wu as well using the same method. Taisu laughs menacingly and compliments his friend for coming up with such a great idea. He promotes him and even raises his payment and orders him to make the arrangements for Jun Wu as well. As the guy was putting the bounty on his head, on the screen, Jun Wu's image pop-ups. Tai Su thought it was this guy's doing, but that guy was terrified as well, saying it was not his doing. Jun Wu told him that he found his location and started laughing at him. He was all over their servers and they had no way to turn that thing down. We see that Jun Wu's whole team was on this mission. They were on another level than some random street level hacker. They had hacked through everything. Jun Wu said that if Tai Su was gonna play dirty, so he would do the same to him as well. He removes the bounty from Hanjin's head and puts the bounty on Shoi Tai Su himself through his own gambling site. All the members who were fighting Hanjin got the message and realized that Nexus was doomed and run like hell. All Tysa's bounty collector turns against him immediately and comes to him to collect the bounty on his head. They take the money and make a run for it from the back door. Those guys also chase them. He was thinking of getting out of there alive first, and then he would climb to the top again from the start. As he was about to get inside the lift, he sees his lackey in the air, injured. It was known other than Park Hanjin, who was pissed at him. Taisu was terrified. He tries to threaten him, saying if something happens to him, he would be dead. But Hanjin doesn't care about some pity threat and starts beating him. Terrified, Taisu tries to make a run for his life, but to no avail. Hanjin beats the shit out of him while he kept threatening him. When threats didn't work, he tried to buy him with money, but that didn't work either. Hanjin just kept stomping him. Taisu tries to run while crawling. He throws the money at him and begs him to stop, saying it hurts like hell. Hanjin calms down even though he wanted to hit him more. But he wasn't letting him go that easily. While Taisu was thinking he was spared, he sees all the thugs who were chasing him earlier, and they were drooling for their 2 billion won. These were the guys who were working for Taisu because of their debt to him. But now that he was on an illegal bounty list, they didn't have to pay him anything. Instead, they pay him back all the things he had done to them while aiming for their 2 billion bounty. And that's how the bounty on his was cleared. Jun Wu's lawyer informs him that he would need at least 14 weeks to recover from the injuries. And as soon as he gets discharged from the hospital, they would proceed with their legal team. All the people who were involved in his scams or helped him in any way were suspended. Jun Wu was thrilled to hear that because this would definitely make Kim Su furious. At the hospital where Tai Su was admitted, Kim Su comes there to meet him. Tai Su was pretending to be asleep but Kim Su calls him out, knowing he was just pretending. Tai Su apologizes to him saying it was all his fault. But Kim Su didn't want his apology. He wanted his money back. He clenches his hand and threatens him to get back all the money, while Tai Su was screaming in pain. On the other hand, Dang Hyun was completely healed and was discharged from the hospital. While coming back home, he sees a few Nexus members assaulting some innocent guy for money. They were about to break his teeth as collateral. Dong Guyan sees their rings and finds out they were from Nexus. He looks at his legs which was jacked now. As the guy was about to take out his teeth, he hears his lackey yelling at someone. The guy was yelling at Dong Guyan, who was doing his exercise where they were bullying the guy. A guy goes closer to him to threaten him. Dong Guyan kicks him so fast that the guy couldn't even see that coming. He used his right leg as well which was injured. He rates his flexibility at 80%. The others attack him as well, and as he beats them, he rates his speed at 70% and his kick power at 50%. He was still not on the level he was before. After beating them when he was leaving, one of the guys recognizes him as the legend himself, Dong Guyan. He couldn't recognize him at first because he has cut his he short, but now he was 100% sure that he was the guy. Moreover, Park Hanjin and Dong Guyan, 
Those two are very famous, they were even called the best fighters of that era. They rewrote history after fighting Nexus. The court attention of many people all over the country. The legends had returned, and they were the center of people's attention once again. That's just entertainment for lots of people, for some people, it's fear and anger. But for some others, it's hope. Now we see Kim Su, who was inside a school and there was a fight in the hallway. But he ignores all that and goes straight to the rooftop to meet someone. The guy says if Kim Su himself came to see him, then the rumors of Park Hanjin returning must be true. This guy right here is Beckman Young. He was the one who stopped Park Hanjin from destroying the Nexus two years ago. He reminds Kim Su how he used him to catch Park Hanjin and threw him aside. And now that Hanjin has come again, Kim Su was asking for his help again. Kim Su assures him that this time would be different and he would give him anything he desires. Min Yo En laughs at this and asks for the Nexus throne. Kim Su told him in a cold voice that he wouldn't be able to handle such a thing. Min Yo En was surprised at how much fighting spirit he had, even though all he does is play games for the tournaments all the time. Min Yo En says he didn't want Nexus and he would also take care of Hanjin as well. After Kim Su was gone, Min Yo En wonders why Kim Su came to him and if he really thinks that he could defeat Hanjin. He realizes that the real intention of Kim Su was to get rid of him and Park Hanjin at the same time. His left hand man was torturing someone for money, while his right hand man was excited to finally be able to kill Park Hanjin. He asks Min Young if he should call the boys, to which Min Young replies that Park Hanjin was not something you could defeat with just numbers. They would have to deal with him using their old ways. At Jun Wu's office, Jun Wu and the girl was fighting again. Seeing this, Dong Haiyan asks Hanjin if they could trust them, to which he replies that they had the same enemies, and that was enough. Just then, he gets a call and the guy on the other side of the phone told him that Inchun was attacked. Number two of the Inchun gang was severely injured and was admitted to the hospital. Jun Wu and others also come there. In so told them that they didn't have to bother, he would take care of this himself. While he was gone, Dong Katsu wakes up. He was pretending to be asleep all this time because he knows that if In So finds out who did that to him, he would kill that guy. Jun Wu assumes that this was the work of Nexus and asks him about the guy who did that to him, to which Dong Gaien replies that it was Park Min Young. Dong Gaien was familiar with his work as the one who smashed his knee was known other than Min Young. He told them about Min Young and how sick of a person he was. He used to make schools fight to decide their rank and used to bully the lowest ranking schools for no reason, that's just how he is. He had colonized all the schools around him and now Dong Gaien's school was next on his list. But the students believed in Dong Gaien and were carefree. One day, one of the students from his class was targeted by Min Young's gang. He asked for Dong Gaien to come to the given location on the guy's back. When he arrives there, there was no one, and as they were about to leave, one more of their guys was beaten by them, and he had also a message on his back. One by one, he kept doing this to his classmates, clouding his judgment little by little, and when his mind was at its limit, Mun Yong appeared in front of him, and that's how their ill fated relationship began. At present, Kim Su launched a new game. He would make schools all over Seoul play his game. That's how he does his business. He meets his advisor named Lion Kim, who was completely covered. He asks Kim Su about using Min Young to get rid of Park Hanjin and if he really trusts that guy. Kim Su assured the guy that he had plans for him as well. At the gym, while Dong Gaien was doing his reps, the girl asks him about Min Young, because he was from America and not many people know about him. So she needed his help to get information on him. Dong Haiyan refers to him as a fighting genius. Among the guys that he had met, there were only three geniuses when it came to fighting. Park Hanjin, Kim Su, and Park Min Young. When they were in high school, no one ruled their area as everyone was afraid of them. Then he hears about Min Young, who completely dominated his school on his first day as a transfer student, and things started to change. At the factory where Dong Haiyan meets him for the first time face to face, Min Young mocks him and calls him a lackey. Pissed, Dong Haiyan attacks him with a fast kick which he dodges easily. He was furious at him for playing with him and targeting his classmates one by one, instead of coming directly at him. Dong Haiyan was consumed by anger at this point and was attacking him like a wild animal. But Min Young was easily dodging all his attacks. Min Young told him that he did all that to make the fights interesting, especially now he had a reason to fight him. Min Young strikes back, 
inflicting great damage on him in just one punch. Dong Haiyan realizes that he was hella strong. He compares him and Hanjin, saying if Hanjin was a wild beast, Min Yong was a venomous cobra, who clouds your judgment with his venom. And that's exactly what was happening to Dong Haiyan right now. He was consumed by hate and grudge, and Mun Yong ended up dominating the fight. He starts beating him continuously, making him unable to fight back. Dong Haiyan was about to pass out, but he forces himself to stay awake. He dodges Min Yong's attack and locks him in a body hold, making him unable to move. Now it was Dong Yun's turn to fight back. All this time, he was looking down on Min Yong, but due to all the beatings, he had finally come to his senses and managed to keep himself together. And now, Min Yong does the same and they both march towards each other to fight like wild animals. After a long fight, both of them were completely exhausted and they both fall to the ground. It was a double KO. As they try to get up to fight again, their fight was interrupted by someone. After the fight, Min Yong orders his left-hand man to pick the hundred strongest members from the schools they have conquered. Even two monsters like Park Hanjin and Dong Haiyan wouldn't stand a chance against 100 strong people. During that time, Kim Su was also in the middle of conquering a few remaining schools. He was having lunch with a guy Lee Munjil. Munjil asks him about Park Min Yong. He advises Kim Su to use him to get rid of Hanjin because Min Yong was as strong as Dong Haiyan. But before they could get on with that plan, they had to take care of the guys who were waiting for them outside. We see a whole school, aiming for the two of them. They come inside, storming. Munjil orders his lackeys to get rid of them. The boss of that gang directly comes for Kim Su. Kim Su gives him a cold look and punches him so hard that he got down in just one strike. Now Kim Su was planning to make Min Yong fight Park Hanjin. Min Yong had managed to gather the 100 strongest guys from all the schools he had under him. Those guys were afraid to up against a monster like Park Hanjin. They were terrified because even Nexus, the strongest gang in the country couldn't defeat him even once. Min Yong scolds them and insults them for being scared of one person. He then encouraged them and manipulates them into thinking that they could really defeat Park Hanjin. Now they were all full of energy and were ready to go even up against Hanjin. Min Yong promises them that after he was done with Park Hanjin, he would go for Nexus and make themselves the strongest gang in the nation. Before they could get to Hanjin, Hanjin comes there himself. He warns them in a cold voice, saying if they really think that just 100 guys were enough to take him down. He stands face to face with Min Yong and asks him if he was their boss. Min Yong tries to trash talk with him, but Hanjin told him to shut it and come at him with everything they have got. Min Yong puts his gloves on, saying it would be an honor. Just then, his two main lackeys attack him from behind. Hanjin wasn't able to dodge that. They had attacked him with pieces of broken glass. He didn't understand why they would attack him with that when Min Yong attacks him. Even though Hanjin blocks his attack, he still receives more damage than a normal punch would inflict. Now he realizes why they used those broken pieces of glass. The rest of the gang attacks him as well. Due to the pieces on him, every punch he receives becomes more damaging than it should be. Even though Hanjin was overpowering them, he was still surprised how they just keep coming at him non-stop. He realizes that Min Yong was using them to drain his stamina as much as possible and hurt his dominating hand. Hanjin was bleeding like crazy and was now being pushed back. To remove the pieces off of his body, he tears his shirt off and ties his hand to deal with glass particles. Hanjin was furious now. Min Yong orders all of them to attack him all at once. The fight was disadvantageous for Park Hanjin. Endless, prolonged. But that situation helped create the legend. He even put Min Yong in his place. Even after fighting 100 guys, he still managed to defeat Min Yong. Min Yong was desperate to win and tries to fight back whatever he had left, but to no avail. He didn't understand how this was possible. He had fought a bunch of strong guys in America, even when they had huge weight differences. He had never got pushed back, not even once. Even when he fought the one called the strongest in America, it ended up as an absolute win for him. So how could this guy overpower him so easily? Hanjin kept beating him until he fell from exhaustion. Hanjin stomps on him and says to him not to try to be corky from now on. If he raises his head again, he would kill him. Mun Yong was furious, but there was nothing he could do to change to outcome of the war. After the fight, he was wondering if he could ever defeat Park Hanjin. He was looking down when his left-hand man told him that he should be the last person to be sad right now because he was the type of person who would do anything to win. 
Min Young gets up and decides that one day, he would definitely beat him no matter how. After that, Min Young left Seoul for some time. Even after he was gone, the rumors of Han Jin beating 100 people and Min Young spread like wildfire. They started to say that even Nexus was not safe anymore. And Nexus's position, which was absolutely feared by the others, began to be threatened. So Nexus tried to take over their territory. But they exceeded their wildest dreams as they were stronger than any of the goons Nexus sent. Starting from Inchun, Gyeongji, and then Gangwon. He also knocked out all the guys who were known as good fighters. Everyone was excited to imagine that soon they would be free from Nexus. At the Nexus's headquarters, Munjil suggests it would be better to lynch him. But, Kim Soo says that if they don't want people to remember Nexus as a mere gang of bullies, then they would have to start with the basic, fear, and purely defeat him in combat. That's why Kim Soo decided to fight Hanjin himself. Munjil objects to his decision. Lion Kim also comes there and advises him to remain calm as he would be putting the whole Nexus at risk just to take down one guy. He suggests they take care of this calmly, even if it means playing it dirty. And they also had the perfect guy for this job, the one who started all this. That way, Nexus wouldn't have to get its hand dirty. They were talking about Min Young. At another place, we see a school fight. Min Young was also there, training, and he was looking much stronger now. But he knows that he still wasn't strong enough to take down Hanjin. Just then, he was approached by someone. It was Kim Soo himself, who offers him to join him, and he would help him take down Pak Hanjin. Kim Soo offers him to give this whole area if he manages to get rid of him. Min Young thinks that he was ordering him around, and Kim Soo didn't deny that. Min Young gets pissed at him and attacks him. But much to his surprise, Kim Soo easily blocks his punch without moving an inch. Kim Soo told him that he already had a plan and money to back that plan. But that plan fits Min Young best, and that way Min Young could also get his revenge on him. Min Young remembers how Han Jin had humiliated him back then, and agrees to hear out his plan. On a rainy day, when Dong Haiyan was getting back to his apartment, some thugs start to follow him and surround him in an alley. Dong Haiyan was pissed and jumped into the fight like a wild animal without thinking, even though their number was way too many. At that time, Dong Haiyan thought that Nexus still abided by only fist fights. But he never thought that they would use weapons and play dirty with him. They were only attacking his legs. Because of all that, he let his guard down. They slowly started to get back at him. And not only that, but this was also the time when one of his own classmates, the current boss of Dongan High School also betrayed him. He was heavily injured. As if it wasn't worst, he gets attacked by someone who he could never forget. It was Min Young. He was also there to gang up on him. Seeing him he realizes that there wasn't any hope of him winning now. He was done for this time for sure. Min Young smashed his knees and sent the image to Han Jin and gave him a location to come to. Seeing Dong Haiyan in that situation, Han Jin was furious. He comes to the warehouse where Min Young had told him to come. He was on his own. Min Young had tied Dong Haiyan upside down and was waiting for Pok Han Jin to come. That's how the war two years ago and the last fight started. Han Jin reminds him how he had specifically told him to lower his head. Mun Young attacks saying he doesn't know how to lose. But instead of attacking him, he attacks Dong Haiyan at the same spot where he was injured and broke his leg. Dong Haiyan was screaming in pain but couldn't. Han Jin was fuming with anger and rushes towards him to save him. He says that he was gonna make sure this time that he remains down. Min Young smirks as this was exactly where he wanted him to be for the next step of the plan. While Han Jin rushes toward him like a wild beast, Min Young's men catch him in chains. The plan was to distract him so he doesn't see the chains, and that's exactly what happened. While he was trying to get himself out of the chains, the other thugs attack him and beat him brutally with weapons. He managed to take them down while being in a bind. Min Young threatens to kill him today and nothing could save him from that. The thugs locked the chains with walls and now Han Jin had no way of getting out of that now. He was stuck by the chains from all four directions. Min Young says that he doesn't care about loyalty or morality as long as he gets to win. And he would do anything to win. He attacks Dong Haiyan in the same spot again to watch Han Jin suffer helplessly. The others approach him to beat him up. Even though he was tied to the wall, he still puts up a fight and was taking them down one by one. The thugs were afraid that he was going to break the chains, and that's exactly what happened. Han Jin broke one of the chains. Seeing him trying to break free, they get on with their next plan and start pouring gasoline all around the warehouse. While Han Jin was trying to break free from the other chains, 
Mun Yong attacks him with the iron rod on his head. Han Jin receives the hit directly to the head and almost lost consciousness. But somehow, he forces himself not to get fainted. Mun Yong boasts about his victory before him and stomps on his face the same way he did back then. The fire had spread all over the warehouse now. They try to calm him down but Min Yoeng had lost it and calls himself the strongest in Korea. His gang member forcefully take him out of there and left the both of them to die in the fire. Dong Hyun blames himself for all of this and says that if it wasn't for him, Park Hanjin wouldn't have faced trash like Park Min Yoeng in the first place. Hanjin gets up even after all those injuries and assures Dong Hyun that he was gonna save him. Dong Hyun couldn't stop crying seeing him in that situation and still trying to save him. They both get out of there and went straight to the hospital. A few days after the incident, the police came to Dong Hyun and Hanjin. Only then do they realize that everything was planned. Park Hanjin was accused of assaulting and setting the building on fire in order to get revenge on the students from another school. The witnesses kept giving the statement that they were the culprit of everything. Of course, the police were not on their side too. And the most conclusive evidence was that burned building that belonged to Kim Soo's family. They charged for massive settlements through an influenced law firm, and they kept bothering their parent about it. And when everyone was getting tired of it, Kim Soo demanded a sincere public apology from Park Hanjin. Hanjin hears his father talking to someone on the phone and asking for help, but the guy makes excuses and refused him. The further goes on to say that it was all his son's fault. Hanjin felt horrible and went outside. He was desperate and frustrated from all of this, and wanted all of this to just end. He was feeling helpless and realized how naive they were to think that nothing could get to them. But now he knows what money could do to someone, no matter how strong you are. Hanjin decided to end this all by apologizing to Kim Soo. The whole Nexus gang was there to see him kneel down. They beat him to the point where he couldn't stand anymore and was on his knees before Kim Soo. Hanjin was strong but he wasn't cunning like Kim Soo. Kim Soo menacingly smiles at him and asks him if feels wronged. He told him to know his place and never try to get to the top because he was nobody from the start. After saying that, Kim Soo leaves, while his gang member beat him even more. And that was all about the incident that took place two years ago. That's how everything went down. When Hanjin came to look for Dong Hyun again, he refused not because he didn't trust him, but because he was afraid that he would be in his way again like the last time. She sympathizes with him and assures him that things would be different this time, because this time they were not alone. Dong Hyun was also determined to bring down the Nexus this time for sure. On the other hand, Jun Wu was thinking why Nexus was using Min Yong. He knows that Nexus already realized that he wouldn't be able to stop Hanjin alone. And that's how he came to the conclusion that Nexus was just trying to buy some time. On the way home, Hanjin gets a call from someone saying long time no see. Just then, a cart rise to run over him, which he dodges, only to get in the way of the other one. The guy in the car throws an image at him, and in that image was Dong Hyun. Now Hanjin was sure who was behind this. Kim Su orders Munjul to help Min Yin in taking down Park Hanjin. At first, he was hesitant to work with Min Yong, but after Kim Su told him the reason, he agreed to help. While Dong Hyun was taking a bath, someone comes inside his apartment and hacks his phone to locate his location. When Dong Hyun gets outside, he was attacked by a biker gang. He dodges the attack and sees the attack coming from the upside too. He dodges that as well and tries to catch the guy but misses his shot. The guy gives him an image. This was an image of Hanjin and Dong Hyun wondered what Min Yong was up to. Mun Yong arrives at the location where he had told Hanjin to come. There, he meets Munjul, who was with his gang. There was some resistance between both gangs but they decide to put their differences aside as Hanjin was on his way there. Dong Hyun was trying to call Hanjin, but due to the hack in his phone, he couldn't contact him. Min Yong sends a fake image to Hanjin, in which Dong Hyun was tied to a rope, and Min Yin was threatening to break his leg again. Hanjin was fuming with anger and runs to the location as fast as he could. 